Hey everybody, welcome to the Applied Energistics 2 1.19 update. There are some major changes with how Certus Quartz is obtained in this update. So let's go ahead and get right into this quick tutorial. So first thing you're going to want to do in 1.19 is go and find a meteorite. So you'll have to explore the world, there should be plenty abound. So here's one that just so conveniently happens to be right next door. So once you have found your meteorite, you're going to want to go in, pop it open, and there's going to be a nice chest in here. In there, you'll probably have some sky stones, some presses, but what you really want to get started with are these Certus Quartz blocks and all of these different clusters. So let's go over the different ones of these real quick. There are four different block types and four different bud types. You'll have this flawless budding Certus Quartz, You'll have a flawed budding Certus Quartz, chipped budding Certus Quartz, and damaged budding Certus Quartz. You'll also have four different levels of the Certus Quartz cluster. So you have this fully grown one, and then you have the large Certus Quartz bud, the medium Certus Quartz bud, and the small Certus Quartz bud. If you mine any of these with a standard pickaxe or a fortune pickaxe, with the clusters that are fully grown, you'll get Certus Quartz crystals, and with any of the buds, you'll get the Certus Quartz dust. And down here we have Flawless Budding Certus Quartz. So this is only available within those meteorites. You cannot harvest this with a pickaxe. As soon as you harvest any of these with a pickaxe, even using your Silk Touch, these are going to downgrade to the next level. So if you harvest a Flawless, you're going to get a Flawed. If you harvest a Flawed, you're going to get it chipped. If you harvest a Chipped, you're going to get damaged. And if you harvest it damaged, you just get a plain old Certus Quartz block. For example here, with our standard diamond pickaxe, we get four Certus Quartz crystals. If we were to use our Silk Touch, we'll get the full Certus Quartz cluster. We place that back down and use our fortune, you'll see we just got an additional seven of the Certus Quartz crystals. So fortune is going to be very beneficial if you're trying to get lots and lots of different crystals and dust and it is similar for these guys so you get one dust and if you use fortune uh, i think you still only get one dust i've messed around with this a little bit and i haven't actually seen them drop more than one dust using fortune yet and again silk touch is just going to give you the different stages of the bud once you've got that done you're going to want to create a charger and this is going to be helpful in finding additional meteorites, so you can get more of these Certus Quartz blocks. So once you've got your, your charger put together, which is just simply five iron and two copper ingots, you're going to want to take some of your Certus Quartz dust that you've just acquired and craft it into this quartz glass. And that's just five dust and four glass. Next, you'll want to make this energy acceptor. That's going to be those four quartz glass that you just made, one copper and four iron ingots. And that energy acceptor is going to go into making this vibration chamber. So grab yourself another furnace and throw on, how many is that? Seven iron ingots. Once you've got your vibration chamber set up, you're going to want to toss some coal in it, put your charger up on top here, and this is what's going to get you some cool stuff. So you can take a compass, shove it in there, and you'll get a meteorite compass. So if we do that, let's see, it goes super quick, and we have a meteorite compass. And that's going to help you find all of those other meteorites in the world. And a Certus Quartz Crystal is going to make a charged Certus Quartz Crystal. So if we put that into the charger, it goes again super quick, and now we've got some charged Certus Quartz Crystal. And over here, there's some other important recipes we got to take care of real quick, too. For example, you're going to need some Flux Crystal shortly. To do that, you're going to want to grab some nether quartz, some redstone, and some charged Certus Quartz crystal. Pop one of those into a pool of water. Wait a second, and you'll get two Fluix crystals. And then there's another recipe that uses a pool of water too. You can upgrade your Certus Quartz block into a damage budding Certus, your damage budding into chipped, and your chipped into flawed. This is done by taking the block and some Certus Quartz Crystal, and just tossing them into a pool of water. And that will upgrade it to the next tier. And you can do that for each of them. 
So if we take all of these, we could go through and get all the way up to flawed budding. You cannot upgrade to the flawless. These flawless are purely reserved for being inside of meteorites. Next, you're gonna to wanna to create an inscriber. So an inscriber takes a couple of sticky pistons, some copper, and five iron ingots. And what this inscriber is gonna do, it will both allow you to take your, your Fluix crystals or your Certus Quartz crystals and crush them into dust, or those inscriber plates that you found within those meteorites, you can turn into different other crafting materials. Once you've got your inscriber put together and powered with another vibration chamber, you'll need several different materials. So in a furnace, if you put some Certus Quartz dust, you'll get silicon, just like that. And then in the inscriber, if you put in a Fluix crystal, you'll get Fluix dust, Certus Quartz crystal, and you'll get Certus Quartz dust. And then once you've found all of your different presses, there are a few different recipes here. So silicon will give you your printed silicon, Certus Quartz will give you your calculation circuit, gold will give you a logic circuit, and diamonds will give you your engineering circuit. And once you've put all of those different circuits together, you can upgrade them to processors. And all of those will require that, that basic circuit with some redstone and the silicon. And you can get a calculation processor, a logic processor, and an engineering processor. Next, you're gonna start needing some different fibers and cables. So we can make a quartz fiber with some glass and some Certus Quartz dust. And then once you have some of those, you can create your Fluix ME glass cables, which is that quartz fiber with a couple of Fluix crystals. And on the next level up, you're gonna have your Fluix ME covered cable which is just your Fluix ME glass cable and some wool. And then to upgrade that to the smart cable, you'll need that same Fluix ME covered cable with some redstone and some glowstone. And the really neat thing about these cables is that they tell you how many channels are actively being used. So up here we have three different devices and it tells us that we're using three channels. And if you take those standard Fluix ME covered cables, the non-smart version, and put four of them together, you got these Fluix ME dense cover cables. But again, these don't tell you how many devices are currently being used. And if we look over here, we get the dense smart cable, which is just four of those smaller Fluix ME smart cables together. And again, we can see exactly how many channels we have on the system. And in this case, we can see that there's a maximum of 32 rather than eight. Now that we've gone over cables, we can craft up a crystal growth accelerator which is just a couple of those Fluix ME glass cables, a block of Fluix, which is just four Fluix crystals put together with some iron and some quartz glass. These crystal growth accelerators, you're gonna to wanna to put around your different Certus Quartz blocks and it will make them grow incredibly fast. So look at that, it's already going super duper quick. And right here is just an example of a small automated system for automatically getting those Certus Quartz crystals. So I just have an annihilation plane set up, so it's breaking these, and it's set up so that it only will break with Certus Quartz crystals. So this is a lot more advanced than what we want to do for this tutorial. So we'll just let that be for now, and we'll come back to that some other day. And these are ME controllers. They're super fancy, RGB, super fast computer. Basically, this is going to be the core of your entire ME system. So this is crafted with some Fluix crystals, your engineering processor, and some sky stone blocks. So make sure when you're at that meteorite, you grab some of those too. And over here, we can see this is a flawless budding Certus Quartz. And what's so special about these is that they don't break. They can grow crystals infinitely and you never have to replace it. But again, these are only available in meteorites. If you try and harvest it, you're gonna downgrade it to the next lower level. So if you want this kind of system, you have to set it up at the meteorite. Another thing you're gonna need for your ME system is some sort of battery cell. And that's what these energy cells are. They store power for your whole system. These are just crafted with some Fluix dust, some Certus Quartz crystals, and some quartz glass. And if you're feeling a little adventurous and got lots of spare materials around, you can create the dense energy cell, which is just eight of those with a calculation processor. Next, you're gonna need an ME drive. ME drive is a couple of engineering processors, some Fluix ME glass cables, and some iron ingots. 
And this is going to store all of your different item cells, fluid cells, whatever it is you're going to be putting into your system so that your system can actually hold items. And speaking of those cells, first you need to make different storage components. So this is the basic 1K ME storage component. So it's a logic processor with some certus quartz and some redstone. And then that is going to get put inside this crafting recipe for your 1K ME item storage cell. And that's just going to take some iron, some redstone, and some more of that quartz glass. And of course, once you have a whole system going, you need to actually access everything in it. So you're going to need some sort of access panel. So to do that, first you need to make a basic illuminated panel. And that's some quartz glass, some redstone, some iron, and some glowstone. So you're going to have to run back to the nether real quick to get that glowstone. Next up, you're going to need a formation core. And these are kind of a staple recipe within AE2. So you may want to save up a few of these. And you're going to need some certus quartz, some fluix dust, and a logic processor. And then you have its opposite, the annihilation core which just swaps in that nether quartz along with the fluix dust and the logic processor. Once you've got those done, you can craft your basic ME terminal. And that's going to use your illuminated panel, one of your logic processors, a formation core, and an annihilation core. And what this ME terminal does, it lets you see all of the different items in your system. It's basically just a giant chest at this point. And if you want to go one step further, you can make an ME crafting terminal which uses that ME terminal we just made, a crafting table, and the calculation processor. And now you have all of that same storage space, but you also have a convenient crafting terminal as well. And now you have a basic ME system. So if you put down your ME drive and you put your storage cell in it, put down your ME controller, power it some way with, a, with an energy cell just for a little backup in case you run out of coal as we have run out here and your vibration chamber throw on some sort of cable I like to use blue just because blue looks nice and boom you have a whole entire system here so now we can store all of our different items and we can easily craft up something if we wanted to so we can put together a block of copper and it will hold that recipe as well. Just click this button to put it back into the system. Well, thanks for watching. That is your basic AE2 for 1.19 in a nutshell. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions about anything AE2 related. Thanks for watching.